Raids in Destiny 2 are the single best content in the game, and it's honestly the thing that keeps me coming back to Destiny 2 on a regular basis. Now, if you're one of those people who's never played it because you're intimidated or you've had a bad experience for group, that's something we should change in 2023. When I first started my Destiny journey, very early on, I was in some bad clans and, again, joined bad LFG groups, and I really hated raids. I couldn't stand them. I thought they were difficult, people were toxic. It was kind of hard to figure things out. But I will say this. I've gone from that person who couldn't play raids to be able to get the raid titles, to actually have soloed a raid in the past, right? I've been able to do that, again, because I've learned and expanded my playing ability. And again, I'm not that great at PvE or PvP. I'm a very average player. If I can do it, you can too. And so in this guide, I wanna go over really the tips I would give to people who are trying to get in raids. Because again, for many guides I see that are out there, and I try to do that for a lot of my raid guides, they tend to assume that you know certain things, right? And I think that happens with a lot of groups. So this one, I will try to give you kind of from the ground up where you start to get into raids, some of the advice, and then again, just some tips on how to get in raids and get comfortable with them because the more you play them, the easier they're gonna become. The first thing I'm gonna talk about before you step into any raid is let's focus on survivability. And again, I'm not asking you to be prepared to run like a master level raid or anything like that, but versus most PVE, if you're in most PVE, if you die, it's not a big deal. And honestly, the ads don't hit you that hard, so it's, again, not a big deal. But in a raid, not only are you trying to focus on not dying and survivability, but at the same time, again, you're trying to kill things, you might be doing DPS on a boss, and you're gonna be doing mechanics. So being survivable and not really thinking about it and being so good and comfortable with it is very important. The other thing is you can get penalized. If you die in a key encounter, then that could potentially mess up the entire fire team. The other thing is, if you die, then you ha someone has to use a token on you. When you use a token, you only have so many of those. If you use all those tokens and you try to revive someone, then the whole fire team can wait. So again, not to put pressure on people, but survivability is something you need to think about. To start with survivability, the first thing I would do is go in and do Legend and Master Lost Sectors. Those are things you can do without other people. They also allow you to get some of the great exotics that you need within the game. Doing these Legend and Master Lost Sectors, you're gonna be under level going into them. So you're going to have to pay attention to what your builds are. And so as you pay attention to your builds, I have so I actually have some videos on my channel where I talk about basic build crafting. A lot of this is gonna change as life all comes out, right? So a lot of how builds are gonna happen. But Again, the first things you're going to think about are things like getting your resilience up to 100, okay? Thinking about potentially if you have mods that help you with staying alive. There are certain mods within the game that will help you with that. And part of it's also about thinking about PvE as almost like PvP. What I mean by that is that you may have to start thinking about cover. How do you stay in cover? How do you make sure you know, you're not sticking around just running around doing things, right? You may actually have to plan out where the enemy is coming out. Where can I hide behind? right can i use my abilities so like if you're on a titan can i use my shield to kind of give me survivability for my hunter do i have to get invisible so i can get away from enemies right and on your warlock you have to start thinking about do i lay a rift here so those are things you need to start thinking about and going through a legend and master lost sector are going to make you think about those things so go through those again you're going to get great exotics you're going to get rewards right out of it and you're going to learn how to be a little more patient when you're playing pve Next, I would go up to Master and Legend Nightfall. So with Master and Legend Nightfalls, you're going to have to deal with champions. Champions are a little bit like mechanics within like lower level PVE. And so you're gonna to have to think about, okay, do I use my abilities to be able to stun these champions? Do I use certain weapons, right? You have to start thinking about those things. You'll also be a little lower light level, right? But the other thing is you will be playing with multiple people. So you have to start thinking about what they're doing. Now you can do this on mic, but you, these are the sort of activities you can still do off mic to get yourself at least comfortable with how you survive. And again, in a nightfall, same sort of concept as what you're dealing with at the Legend of Master Lost sectors, but again, with more people. And if you do die in this case, you don't have tokens or things like that unless you're playing GMs, but you do have the capability of messing up the run if you're not survivable. So again, that will help you with that. Then when you're thinking about survivability, start thinking about resilience. Again, resilience I talked about earlier, but also build crafting. And I have a video where I talk about basic build crafting, which again will change, but think about what you do. You don't have to get crazy about build crafting, but you at least need to start thinking about the mods you bring in, how you balance your abilities, right? You have to start thinking about those things. Once you're through this, then you need to learn how to connect with people. So this is the part where people, some people are gonna just stop, 
there is, but here's the thing, you cannot play a raid unless you talk to people. If you're not comfortable talking to people, don't play raids. Now, if you got really good at raids, you I have seen people do raids with, you know, off mic, right? Because some of the mechanics get so easy. People can just kind of tell what people are doing, especially if it's the same group. So there is a capability, but the thing is, for the most part, you're going to need to be able to communicate because there's a lot going on a raid and there's a lot of mechanics where people have to decide who's doing things in certain orders. So to start that first, you're going to have to get, now you're gonna to have to decide how you connect with people. Obviously LFG is one way to do this and that means looking for game. There are a variety of places where you can do this. You can do this on Bungie through the app, app itself. You can find discords all over the internet where there's plenty of LFG groups. Reddit will typically have some LFG groups there. And there's also a site called the100.io, which you can also use. My clan actually uses this for a lot of our matchmaking activities. And this is a place where you can sign up and sign up for raids, a lot of teaching raids. So it's a good place to kind of go and look for things. As you're doing the LFG, there could be some terminology you're not as familiar with that you have to think about. There is KWTD, and this is know what to do. If you see a post with that, you probably wanna stay away from it because that post is basically saying you need to know what you're doing before you get in there. They're not gonna be very friendly for beginners. There is fresh. Fresh means that you're starting from the very beginning. So if you wanna learn an entire raid, this is a good place to do that. There is so many clears. If you see you know, so clears 15 plus, that means they're wanting people to have a ton of clears. Again, stay away from that. There's a term CP. This means that they're running from a CP. A CP is a checkpoint within a rated different encounter. So again, if you want to learn a particular encounter, this is a good way to do that. And then there's also things where people will say, you know, that they're comfortable with new players. Those are the sort of activities or teaching runs. Those are the sort of LFG posts you're going to look for. Now, if you don't have a whole lot of luck with, with going through the LFG route, you can also go through clans. And clans are a great way to meet people, but they can also be terrible too, just like any group of human beings, right? So there's some clans that are very toxic. They want end game people. And again, that's great for those people. I, again, I play this game to have fun, not to have a headache. So um, again, I would stay away from those. And I had experiences earlier in my career where I played with clans like that. And again, they just had ridiculous requirements on how active you need to be and how good you had to be. And just, again, I'm doing this for fun. I don't have time for that, to be perfectly honest with you. So I would, again, you could start trying out clans. You know, look for, you know, maybe if you have friends on the game, look for people who have clans that you can join. You know, look for, you can look, a lot of times there's Facebook groups where people talk about their recruit for their clans. Again, some of the places I mentioned earlier, like Reddit and Discord, there'll be clans advertised there. And just try different ones until you feel comfortable. Sometimes when you do LFG, you'll actually find clans that way. You know, some of the people in our clan who found their way are people who we LFG'd with. So again, if you can, a clan is a great way because one of the things you're going to do when you get in your first race, you want to be comfortable with the people you're playing with and finding that right fit either through LFG or clans is a great way to do that. When you do join your first group activity, make sure when you connect with a group that you set ground rules. Okay, so make sure you know, hey, these are the ground rules when we get into this activity. This is the way people are going to want to play things and make sure you understand the tone of the group, right? If you have a one that says, hey, we're comfortable teaching people, but they get kind of snarky or they have kind of an attitude, just go ahead and leave that group. Just say, hey, this is the right fit for me. I'm just not gonna do this, right? We're gonna go with a different group. Because again, you don't want your first experience playing a raid to be with people who are toxic. So if people are sighing or, you know, kind of getting on people for making mistakes, then honestly, that's not the right group and you should just move on. Make sure people know the sound of your voice and what to call you. So during the encounter, they're gonna to need to make call outs really quickly. And so people need to know what your name is. And some people have really weird names. So like people, a lot of times in my groups will call me part-time, right? Cause it's short. Cause you wanna have a short nickname. You don't wanna say part-time guardian 2050. You don't wanna to have to say something really long, right? And people need to understand your voice. So make sure that they hear your voice over time and identify for your name. Cause that way during the stress, when he, raids can get a little heated, they'll know what you're, if you're calling for help or something like that, they'll know who you are. And again, make sure sometimes you say, hey, this is part-time, I need help with this, right? Or something like that. So again, communicating, letting people know your voice and what to call you is very, very important. Now talking about that, I would say probably the first thing to get to dip your toe into is playing dungeons. And I won't go into all the things I would go into dungeons because I'll do that during the portion of the guy where I actually get into the raid details. Dungeons are really great in that it's only three players and you could do this easily with an LFG group, right? They have different mechanics. They'll have jumping puzzles, all the things that you're going to have in a raid, right? But in this case, it's a little shorter in time, right? And it's a little bit easier in the requirements. So 
I would definitely play Dungeons. And again, I would play all of them. I would say, most people are gonna say, hey, what's the easiest one? I think the Spire of the Watcher, the new one that just came out, that's a fairly easy one to do. Um, I think also Pit of Heresy is pretty easy and has a good balance of mechanics. Then after that, the ones get progressively more difficult all the way up to probably duality. Um, but again, and there's Shattered Throne, obviously, the, the OG um, dungeon. So again, I would just play multiple dungeons because they're going to teach you multiple different types of mechanics. You'll find each raid has different mechanics. So if you want to get comfortable with raids, try dungeons first. Again, they require a lot less time. They're, the mechanics are a lot simpler, and it's a little bit more forgiving. Okay, so you're getting close to doing your first raid. Now, at this point... Let me kind of walk through how most raids are composed. Most raids, at the very beginning, you're going to have some some activity that's going to teach you some of the very basic mechanics that you will build on through the raid. You'll find as you go through encounters, you'll start learning some mechanics and then they'll build on top of them. So by the end of the raid, you'll really know all the mechanics needed to finish up the final boss. Typically, there's a lot of ad clear, there's some basic mechanics. They're fairly easy ways to get into the raid. Once you get past that, then you're going to get progressively more difficult raid encounters. And there's usually, like I said, anywhere from three to five encounters in a raid, again, depending on the raid that you're talking about. You'll have some encounters, like kind of the first one, where there's not really a boss or DPS that's involved, but it's more around mechanics and ad clear. And again, those will continue to build throughout the raid. You'll have some encounters that are primarily focused around a boss. And so that's when you have to start thinking about DPS. So through most of the raid, you can probably think about what things help you be survivable, your ad clear. You don't have to think about what weapons are going to do a lot of damage. But when you get to DPS phases, you are going to have to think about that because doing DPS to a boss is very important because the longer it takes to do DPS, and DPS is how much damage you do, right? The longer it takes, the more times you have to go through repeated mechanics, the more people can die, and you may potentially wipe and not finish an encounter. So doing DPS is going to be really important. And as we get into more detail, depending on the raid, we'll get into some of the metas and, and how things work in the particular raids. There's also typically secret chests. These are located in different areas. Um, these will give you gear. It's not going to be gear that's at a at a high parallel but it may give you another chance to get that special drop that you're looking for and they are again located there's usually like two per raid and again there'll be videos and people can show you where those are located at there's gonna be jumping puzzles now jumping puzzles are the bane of my existence so again depending on how difficult the jumping puzzle is you know you might need a sword um, if you're on your hunter, you might need stompies depending on the encounter. Most times you don't need it, but it does help out. It makes it a little less forgiving. You're going to want to make sure that if you're on a titan, maybe you have something like lion ramparts because, again, they may they allow it to be, you know, a little bit more forgivable. You want to have high mobility, right, no matter what class you're on. And then depending on how you do things, some people will tell you they need jumps where they can get higher quicker. I tend to want jumps that are more controlled. That's why I like my hunter because I have three jumps so I can kind of think through and make sure if I make a mistake, I can correct it. On your Titan and Warlock, then you might want need ones that require more directional control. But again, it just depends on how you particularly like to jump and jumping puzzles. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there are going to be mechanics. And again, the mechanics build throughout the raid. So again, the very beginning, you're learning the very basic mechanics, and then you continue to build on top of mechanics because they'll give you the vanilla flavor of the mechanics. Then they'll add a little twist to it. Then I'll keep adding a little twist to it. And it's important to learn those because as you get those little twists, they will eventually become things that are very key because typically what they'll do is they'll take all the things you've learned in all the encounters and they'll be basically a subset of those will be things you need to defeat the final boss. Okay, so now it's time. You've gotten more comfortable with doing LFG or getting into a clan. You've worked on survivability. You kind of play a few dungeons. Now you want to get into your first raid. So again, just like I didn't go into this the dungeon section because I didn't want to do it twice, but really one of the first things is make sure you watch some videos, playthroughs, Look for infographics, potentially, to kind of show you how the different rooms are laid out. And again, you can find these on a lot of Reddits, the Destiny 2 subreddits. There's also a Raid Secrets subreddit that you can find some of these uh, pieces of information on. Now, videos are only going to show you so much. Some people think you watch a video and you're completely in the Raid and you know what you do. Well, I think experience is probably the most, uh, most thing that can help you. But again, the videos give you context, at least allow you. So a lot of times I like to watch a video, then play the encounter, then maybe go watch the video again because what you didn't really have context when you watched the video the first time and you didn't have context when you actually did the first encounter the first time but after you've done both you can go back to the guys oh yeah i missed that that makes more sense and again i have a ton of videos on this channel 
that you can use to kind of help you through some of that. Now, once you get in the raid, make sure you take loadouts that you're comfortable with. Now, your raid group might have specific things they want you to take. And be careful, if a group is too adamant about certain things, it might not be the right group to be in. But take loadouts you are comfortable with that are mixed in with what the meta is per encounter. So for instance, if you're in an encounter and you're doing ad clear, then maybe things like Wither Horde or Grenade Launcher or things that allow you to do a lot of ad clear very quickly would probably be useful. But if you get to a DPS phase, you're gonna need things that do DPS really quickly. So things like if you're in some encounters close up to someone, you might need Lomet if you haven't, or you might need linear fusion rifles, or you might need Gallahorn and rocket launchers. So again, it really depends on the particular encounter and what the meta is for that. But again, the biggest thing is make sure it's something you're comfortable with, because if you're not comfortable with it and you die, that's obviously not helpful for anyone. And again, like I mentioned, you know, DPS is obviously important in bosses, but if you're dying a lot, DPS doesn't really help out, right? Because everyone wipes. So again, balance those things out and make sure if the group that you're with, that they're comfortable with that. And again, the things you're going to think about per encounter. Some encounters are very ad clear in nature, like we talked about. Some require champions, so you might need things to stun the champions, right? Some encounters require jumping puzzles. When you're jumping puzzles, obviously, you're, you may need things to help you with that. Make sure also you set aside time. So... Learning raids for the first time are gonna take you a bit of time. And when I take, say a bit of time, depending on the group and if they're comfortable with it, it could take anywhere from two to four hours, right? You don't have to do that. And in fact, learning one encounter per night, or that might be a good route to take, right? But setting aside the time is really important and make sure you communicate with that group so they don't get frustrated if it's taking too long, right? Or people leave, because then if people leave or you have to leave, then you have to find someone else and then that just wastes everyone's time. Set ground rules, be very clear when we come into encounters, like, hey, I'm new, I'm learning, these are the type of things that, you know, I'd like to do or I'd like to learn, right? And make sure if everyone, everyone kind of communicates and understands, for also, communicate that you don't know certain things about the raid, right? It's very important, especially if someone's teaching you the raid, that they understand that. Don't go in there and say, oh, I know how to do everything, right? Because then people get really frustrated when you don't really know how to do everything. So make sure to be fair to people that you do that. I would also say, make sure you take a role. Some people are gonna say, oh, I'm just gonna stay on ad clear. I'm gonna stay in the back. If you really wanna invest in the raids, the mechanics and learning that's the most, is the best part of the game. Go ahead and bite the bullet and be one of the people, don't sit behind, right? Because I know some people wanna be carried through the raid. If you wanna be carried through the raid, that's fine. There's plenty of groups or people who will do that for you. If you really wanna invest and learn how to do the best content in Destiny, pick a role. Don't just sit in the back, pick a role. And again, it doesn't have to be the most difficult role, but start learning the roles and change the roles. Like as you're doing the raid, when you do it the next time, maybe pick a different role because again, it's gonna make it easier if you ever have to do a raid in LFG and you you can just say, hey, I know how to do multiple roles. You don't have to say, hey, I need to do just this one role. They may already have someone in their group that does it and they say, oh, you're getting kicked. So just make sure you think through that. Ask a ton of questions. Now, obviously it depends on your group, but you know, if you don't understand something, ask a question. Feel vulnerable, right? If you're not comfortable with that, you shouldn't be raiding, right? Because you're not gonna know everything at the very beginning. Also, as you're running with the group, make sure, a lot of times when people watch videos, they're like, well, this is the only way to do it. I, we had a guy one time that we were doing a Scourge of the Past and he was absolute clear, like there's one thing, there's a mechanic where you can stun the boss. And he says, it's a white mechanic, it's a white mechanic, we need to shoot it. Well, you don't have to shoot it, especially if you were quick with that boss. It's not something you have to do. But he was absolutely, because he'd seen a video or heard from someone. So make sure when you get in there, you understand how they run the encounters. Have that discussion, because sometimes you might learn something, because when videos get put out, even my videos, I try to put updated videos sometimes to have updated mechanics, but sometimes you don't know, metas change, and you also don't know all the details at the very beginning when you first do those raid guides, right? So someone may have learned a better way to do things. So be comfortable with not having to do it just the way you know or the way that a video shows you. Again, it goes without saying to make sure you feel comfortable communicating, right? Um, and just get comfortable with that, right? If you're not comfortable with communicating when you need help or anything else, you're not gonna do uh, very well. And along those lines, make sure we need help. If you're stuck and need help, call out. People would much rather come help you than you die and that causes an issue with the encounter. So again, do that. Have fun, you know, you should be having fun and going, but know when to talk and when not to talk because sometimes people will just talk the entire time. Well, there's mechanics going on and if you're talking and people can't hear, then everyone's gonna wipe. So have fun, you know, talk where it's appropriate, but when it gets down to business sometimes, there's times where, hey, time to get down to business. Let's focus on getting this encounter done and let's cut on the chit chat. Again, like I said earlier, make sure you, you're clear of people what you know and what you don't know, right? If you don't do that, then you're probably gonna fail. Um, get comfortable jumping if you're not. So if you're not, just 
like I said, try to continue working on that. That's something I struggle with quite a bit. Then the other thing is, as you're getting into encounters, buy raid banners. Uh, raid banners you can get from Hawthorne. Are these things that you can use in encounters basically to get your super and all of your ammo back. So that's really useful. And then finally, like I said, when it goes to loadouts, look for vid guides on, on YouTube. Also, like I said, on this channel, we have quite a few videos on that. But also, you know, ask, you know, kind of match that with what your the people in the fire team are doing. Again, like I said, the biggest thing is everything's gonna be custom depending on how your fire team does things. Because again, the video might tell you to do something, but the fire team may do things a little bit differently or they may need something. So for instance, if you're running rocket launchers for DPS and need some of Gallahorn so they can get wolf pack rounds, then you know, they may need you to run Gallahorn. So again, just make sure you have that conversation. And that's really it, guys. Raids are probably the most interesting content in Destiny 2. If you're not playing them, you're really missing out. They do require you to be social, right? And it's something I struggle with at the beginning because honestly, I'm not, I wasn't a social gamer, right? But once you master them, it's some of the most rewarding stuff to be able to get over that hill. And it's funny, you know, now raids a little more simple for me to the point where I have to do master challenges and other things to kind of get the same reward sometimes. But there's nothing like learning and achieving and completing that raid the first time and knowing you can do it and you can do it. Again, anyone can play and compete in raids. They just need to be patient, they need to communicate, and they need to be a team player. And if you're doing those three things, you'll be in good shape. That's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.